making sure we are properly exposed because this is the point of the video. We are talking about filters for the drone. All right, so first off, let's talk about properly exposing on the DJI Mavic Mini. Now, if you have the drone or maybe you've just been keeping up with the videos, you know that we don't yet have full video manual control yet. Now, I say yet because right when the DJI Osmo Pocket came out, we didn't have them either, but after a few firmware updates, we did. So, fingers crossed, keep optimistic. That said, on the Mini, we do have auto exposure lock, so the exposure doesn't try to change mid-flight, mid-video, and leave you with amateur-looking shots. We also have exposure compensation mode, which we can also use to expose the image, as well as a histogram tucked away in the menus. So first off, let's pull up that histogram. So if you don't know how to read a histogram, I advise go watch some videos on it, but a quick crash course. It's fairly simple. To the very left, you have your shadows. To the middle, you have your midtones. And the very right, it's going to be your highlights. Now, you don't want to crush your blacks or blow out your highlights. But for video, it's going to be a little bit different for photography, at least for me. You're going to want to overexpose just a little bit, or at least I like to. And in post-production, you can go back and darken your blacks. Now it's easier to darken your blacks in post-production because if you try to do it and expose to them in camera, it's gonna leave you with some noise and it's gonna be harder to deal with when you're editing. Now slightly overexposing your shots while filming, it's subjective. You can expose to whatever art direction you're going for, but it's just the way I like to do it. So using the histogram and some knowledge on the DJI Mavic Mini's camera, we can properly expose the image because we know that the DJI Mavic Mini sports a micro or one over two three inch sensor with an f.28 aperture. And at midday, it's gonna sit at ISO 100. So with all that considered, if we're using the exposure compensation mode, the auto exposure is just gonna be left with changing the shutter speed. And here's where the ND filters are gonna come in handy. The reason that we're going to use them is so we can get closer to the 180 degree shutter rule that is general rule of thumb for filmmaking. Say you want to film a video at 24 frames per second, you want to use a 1 over 50th of a second for a shutter speed. If you want to film a video at 60 frames per second, you generally want to use a 1 over 120th of a second shutter speed to film. And the reason you do this is just because it's the most natural for the eye to look at. So obviously these rules are more guidelines and you can break them whenever you need to depending on the project. Say you want to do some green screen work. Generally you want to use a higher shutter speed because it's going to be easier to key out post-production. That's for another video. So back to the DJI. So in short, just using the ND filters is going to allow for the auto exposure mode to choose a slightly more normal shutter speed on the DJI Mavic Mini. Now, again, we can hope for full manual video controls on the device, but until then, this is what we got to do if we want to get that more natural prosumer to professional look. So ease of use for the ND filters is straightforward. Installation is easy, but it's not the best way to connect filters, but I think it's the only way we probably can on the DJI Mavic Mini. So let me show you.
So installation of the filters relies on the owner to put a little strip of styrofoam adhesive on the top of the camera. And then from there, you just take this piece and you slide it in. And boom, there you go. So with the DJI Spark, the filter's just connected through the back and hooked onto like the little air filter, whatever you call it, on the back of the gimbal. And with the DJI Osmo Mini, for example, it's more of like a magnet mechanism that you just attach on the front of the camera. So having to add this little piece of adhesive is less than ideal to some, but for me, I feel a necessary evil if we want to get more out of our drone footage. All right, so in closing, I would like to just say that ND filters are an absolute must if you want properly exposed footage at a correct shutter speed, especially for a product like the DJI Mavic Mini where you can take it almost anywhere because it's so small, so why not take your footage up a notch? Expose properly, use the proper shutter speed, and you're good to go. Thank you for watching my channel. We will be back again with more DJI videos, more videos of the photography world, videography world, maybe some tips and tricks, what have you. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Peace.